Okay, and for our final formal presentation, uh, Ingrid Holm will uh, be talking about uh, work that she's been doing on uh, providers. What do I? So all you need to do is just uh, hit the. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of the. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. All, all right, it's all set up. All right, so I'm here to uh, talk about the healthcare provider uh, survey process. And just a little bit of background on this. I mean, as you know, there's very little kind of systematic knowledge uh, right now that we know concerning the views of healthcare providers regarding getting gen genomic information back of the type that we're returning in eMERGE. But as it turns out, most of the eMERGE sites, and so there's non-clinical sites, did not have an, a specific aim to study the impact of return of results on healthcare providers. Um, yet the ROR-LC, so the work group, really one of the missions of the work group is to study the LC uh, to kind of LC of both uh, patients and outcomes that, uh, on institutions return the results, but also, also on healthcare providers. And so this group really felt that it was really important to assess the impact of return of results on healthcare providers as part of their mission. So we're kind of faced with, we think it's really important to do, but we didn't have a way to do that. And so what happened is that we, um, uh, the work group applied for an administrative supplement through eMERGE, uh, through the NHGRI LC uh, to um, uh, develop a survey to um, study healthcare providers. So we kind of all these are the parts of uh, what we did um, to develop that survey. And then we applied for an R1, which I should say one of the kind of issues when we talk about timing later on is that we didn't get the R1 initially. We had to resubmit it. So between the time that we submitted or decided to do this and actually got funding for it was like a year um, or a year and a half. But we did get it. And um, the uh, this is R1 was to um, survey healthcare providers within kind of a month of receiving results back um, about a patient they were following in eMERGE, and then to do qualitative interviews six months later at kind of four of the sites to really get some more kind of in depth information about um, uh, kind of the impact on healthcare providers. And then, you know, to put this all together to kind of identify approaches to returning you know, these uh, genomic sequencing results that kind of overcome the barriers that healthcare providers saw. So it's all kind of very um, kind of logical, straightforward. We had kind of nine sites doing this all together, but we discovered, as you can imagine, that there are um, a lot of challenges and uh, kind of some lessons learned. So the first is just, um, Every site had a different return of results process. So this is, you're not supposed to, the idea is not to read this, but to just kind of realize that it's really complicated. So this was a study that, um, so Georgia uh, Wiesner and Kathy Lepig together um, kind of developed this uh, group. They interviewed people. They went through to really categorize what the differences are. And there's a ton of differences in how results are being returned. And this is kind of a summary of them. So different cohorts. Um, different methods of return, study staff return and results, people getting choices. There's all sorts of differences across the sites on the return process, yet we're trying to study this in some kind of um, a logical way. So, um, and I'm going to go through kind of some of what these differences are and how this impacted us trying to send out surveys and get information back from healthcare providers. So the first question is who returns the results to the participants? So in some cases it was a, a primary care provider, genetic counselor, geneticist, other subspecialties. So it kind of comes down to when it comes to returning results, who to send the survey to. So we're not going to survey an eMERGE geneticist who's returning the results to their to a participant. I mean, that's not the point of this. We know what we think. The point is what other people think. So yet there is some places, uh, sites where an actual health care provider, either subspecialist or primary care provider is returning it, and we are interested with them. So kind of figuring out who the people are. Um, and then there, as I showed on the other slide, there's like differences in the timing of returning results to provider and patient. So trying to figure out when does a patient have the information and the provider have the information so that we can send a survey, because we said we were going to send it within kind of a month. Sometimes these you know, results actually they're all going to the medical record, but there's also timings with that. Is it in the medical record before it's returned to the patient, or is it returned to the patient and then goes to the medical record? And where does a healthcare provider come into that? So that became kind of complicated. And then once the results are returned to a patient by somebody, who else did these results go to? Because these are the people we were kind of also really interested in surveying. So 
if a geneticist returned the results, when does it go to their healthcare provider? Um, is it going to a subspecialist who's also seen the patient that might want to follow up on it? And we're interested in getting these views of all these people, but it was kind of figuring out who all these people are. And then we had issues with, you know, how are the results returned to a provider? Have they sent a letter? Does it go through the EHR? How do we know that a provider's actually kind of seen the results? And then, uh, and this all kind of gets to this issue of timing of the survey. So we wanted to do this within a month of getting results, but we don't really know if have they gotten it yet? Have they read it? So there's a lot of kind of complicated um, kind of issues there. So um, so then there were also other issues. So um, you know things like um, the surveys are being sent through from Boston Children's through a red cap survey, um, but with some issues with technology. There's some issues getting through a firewall. Issues with knowing that actually the provider received the the in, uh, invitation to participate um, in the survey. Um, and then, you know, not everybody had email addresses. Now, I'm sure everybody, all the healthcare providers had an email address, but they may not have an email address associated with their work. I mean, they have their own Gmail account. And so for a number of sites, for the primary care providers that are in community, we couldn't email them. So then we have to send them a fax or send them a letter. And if anybody's, you know, it becomes much more complicated when you have a survey that's an online survey where you have to send them a letter to get that. And so that made it all... Uh, kind of added uh, complications. And so then we've always had issues with enrollment. You know, so it's like not a surprise. Um, we are providing an incentive, but it's not like we're giving them $250 to fill out the survey, which would be a, probably a real incentive. But, you know, we are giving them some incentive, but these people are busy or they're, you know, kind of read this and don't even really know what it is or they're saying, I'm just not interested in participating. The email goes to spam. I mean, it's all sorts of kind of issues with, with um, kind of engaging um, participants. And then we had some issues with the survey itself in that we're sending a healthcare provider a survey about a patient, but we can't put the name or anything that's identifying about the patient in the email about the survey, yet we have to get them to know who it is. So that became quite complicated um, trying to say, you know, so we end up saying your patient who's, you know, X years old who had this disease, you know, things we put in to try to make it so the healthcare provider understood it. But that was certainly kind of another complication of um, sending these surveys out. And then there are, you know, some of the sites, a, a, a healthcare provider may have gotten results back on more than one patient. So how do they know which patient you're talking about? So this also became um, kind of very complicated. Um, and then we had kind of some sites uh, specific issues. So I should just say this, we had a reliance agreement. So uh, Boston Children's was the kind of central IRB. And we did have this reliance agreement, which made it somewhat easier because any changes kind of go through one uh, place it really did work, but there's still issues at sites for kind of rules or um, about what is allowed when it comes to things like non-responders. So we're trying to figure out. So if we send three, you know, uh, the survey and then reminders, those are non-responders. Can you call them? Can you kind of contact them in some other way? And certain sites have kind of specific rules about that. And um, we actually also had. Um, other studies at site that might kind of interfere with the study, and for example, Vanderboot has do, done or has done qualitative interviews on some of their healthcare providers, and so we can't, we don't want to interfere with that um, kind of process. Um, uh, then there was the whole thing with timing, and that was that's really been a big uh, kind of issue for us. And as I said, it took a while to get the grant. So by the time we got it and got going, a lot, a number of the sites had already turned a significant number of their results and we're kind of out of this window where any healthcare provider is gonna really necessarily remember what we're talking about. And so that um, has uh, kind of been an issue for us. Um, so at the same time, so we had a, a lot of kind of issues, but we do see some of these as providing some opportunities. And I think the big one is really kind of leveraging the difference between the return the results process of each site. So this allows us to think about uh, to kind of look at all these issues, responsibility for results, conversations, workflow, management of patient results, benefits, concerns, in the context of how results are being turned, how they receive them, and being able to look at does the way you get results and the um, really impact on uh, what difference it makes on the impact of healthcare providers. So I think the, the real kind of lesson learned is, is that taking advantage of all the differences that we have between the sites um, to um, really kind of do this experiment of nature and see 
what maybe kind of works best and eventually come up with uh, recommendations. And so I'll stop there and uh, turn it back to Mark. Great. Thank you, Ingrid. Okay.